All right guys, welcome to today's video. We are gonna be taking a deep dive into the automatic transmission side of the A90 Supra. Now I explained in previous videos that there's a company called HTG out of Poland that makes standalone transmission controllers that allow you to put these 8 HPs in drift cars, in race cars, and you can control them and make them do awesome stuff. They do it for DCTs as well, but doing it in a stock car where you're still trying to have the stock ECU work is a bit of a challenge. My biggest reason for wanting to do it is you can add a clutch pedal and you can use it like a clutch kick even with an automatic gearbox and you can also use it when you're using a handbrake so that way you're not just like stalling out the automatic gearbox. While I've been messing around with my little angle kit stuff, Adam from HTG has actually been here messing with the Supra already. Hello Adam. Hello. How do you like my compound? Oh, it's big. Have you been having fun? Yeah, of course. The first thing when Adam got here was race my Supra around the compound, but you weren't just racing it, you had a plan. And what were you doing with it? Okay, so I decided to check out how the uh, Supra is communicating between the modules inside. So um, we basically took apart the car. We wired it so we can see and can tap into the canvas from underneath the transmission. And we used the GCU to basically record and uh, monitor data that is transmitted on canvas in the car so we can verify and we can develop a way to communicate and emulating the OEM TCM uh, in the car. With newer cars it gets very complicated because the way that everything talks is through CAN bus. So essentially what I've heard this referred to is you are sniffing the can yes. of the original car to understand how it talks to itself so that way the GCU can talk to it and keep all the stock stuff happy. Yeah. And exactly. I think it was almost the first day you already had the GCU plugged in and emulating some of the stock functions and it seemed to be pretty happy. Yeah. Uh, we did have uh, some experience in previous BMW cars so we were not starting from scratch. So we basically used what we knew before and we expanded on, upon uh, sniffing the canvas from BMW Supra. So now that you've got the canvas stuff figured out and the GCU can emulate it, what's the next step? Uh, the next step is to basically pull the transmission out of the car, uh, remove the TCM, OEM stuff, rewire it so GCU can control the solenoids inside the transmission, read the sensors and talk to the CAN via CAN bus. And look how beautifully the, uh, the Titan exhaust colored. Looks so sick. So you said you had to pull the trans, but really what you meant you had to pull the pan, huh? Yeah. So looking in there, I'm not gonna lie, it looks very strange compared to the manual transmissions I'm used to seeing. It's weird seeing a pan off an auto. Yeah. So the, uh, the unit that's in there, uh, you gotta do some soldering, some chip we swapping. Can take a look. The computer, the OEM stuff is a valve body from the transmission. This is actually the hydraulic part that controls the clutches. And then you have the TCM, which is the part that uh, controls the valves that control the clutches. So we have the mechatronics out of the car and now we're going to cut the OEM TCM uh, just to rewire the, this stuff to work with GCU. Alright, now we, go. we have a drift A90 now. How many times have you done that? Ah, uh, a couple. Yo, you sure you could do that? No. <laughs> Yo, you're in the way, huh? Nice. There's a Bosch sensor, don't worry about this fucking thing. Yeah, we just cut all of it just straight off. Oh my god, that's it. They ain't no darn back. God, dude. Yeah, you broke it. I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have the can from the OEM stuff cut out. We have the pads cleared around so we can solder to them. 
uh, we removed all the all of the debris. So now we are going to test if all of the parts are not making contact with the cam. So there is no issues later. So what you do is you put one probe on the cam and then you, you go for all the pins so you see that there is no continuity between the pad and the can. This is often an issue because uh, some piece of metal can go under the pad and then you have issues with running the transmission. I appreciate you guys waiting patiently. And I finally have the winner of the R33 giveaway that I can announce to you guys. It is Mason Chaffatelli from New Jersey. They'll be taking this thing home as well as $10,000 cash. As always, we like to give the option to the winners to fly in so we can hand deliver the car, get a little bit of an experience at the compound. We just got in contact with Mason and just got the approval, so we gotta figure out the logistics on that. And a reminder, super giveaways going on. Today we are gonna spend a little bit of time making this thing look even better. As you guys know, this Supra will be in a giveaway car. I'm not going to leave it basic. And as cool as the two-piece CR Kai was, I'm not a big fan of black wheels with polished lips. And I've had a set of TEs stashed for my personal Supra. Actually, two sets. So I have a set of diamond black SLs and a set of white SLs. But I don't know the tire size that's going to work right or which is going to work better. So now is the test fit time. This is actually a 305 NTO1. Now on paper, it should be able to fit on a stock body Supra, which sounds wild to me being used to like S chassis, they can only fit like a 235. Um, but if it fits, that's sick. This car has already had the fenders clearanced, which is a huge win and should make life a lot easier. All right. Looks like she's gonna fit. Damn, that's a meaty tire. So the NTO1, has a lot of grip. What I like about it, it's not like a purpose drag tire. It's kind of a little bit more of like a circuit tire. So it still handles really good around the corner, but it has a very low tread wear, high traction, sticky surface. So when this thing's making over 700 horsepower, it should have very little spin and a lot of fun. Drop her down. Oh yeah, that's like literally perfect. Look at that. Not bad at all. I dig it. She got some meats now. And it's kind of like unassuming. Like it doesn't look like the car has got like a huge drag radial in the rear. It's kind of fitted, John. Damn. You got this back. Really on. <laughs> <laughs> of course I gotta put the OG stickers on it, but I wanted to make sure it's gonna fit first before I go and waste some of my stickers that I've been stashing. So we'll put the uh, the diamond black on this side of the car and then see what the white looks like on the other side. Too bad he's slow. <laughs> really, John? Chill. Missed us? John's back. John missed us. No. Oh no, take him off, take him off. Well, you got a space on. Take him off, take him off. I can see the fender. I can see the future. Yeah, that looks terrible. No, take it off. I'm working on it. The spacer. Why are you guys like acting some different way with the camera's on? That's what the people want, John. They want high energy. Look better, Twizzler? You got the heck of camera right now. <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it levels out. Yeah, it looks better. <laughs> no, but levels out. We're definitely gonna need to delete the red valve caps. What? I'll get the rust -Oleum. Yeah. I'll push the super right? Yeah. This is intense. I'm, I don't enjoy this actually. Invigorating. You can do this, I think. You think? Yeah. I don't think. My fingernails aren't what they used to be. You need to drink more milk. Yeah. Hey, Colette's got me on that California bullshit. What's up? <laughs> oh, Colette. Can I lower this? Yeah, you lower it. Nice. We could probably use a tap, a tiny bit of spacer in the front. Like right now, it's super safe. Um, like I do see that a 265 could fit, but I'm curious what you guys think. I like for a front tire to have like a little bit of rounding, versus if it was like this, where it's mm -hmm. bulging in the front. What do you think, John? Definitely a 265. Really? Yeah. I didn't think it will fit, but a decent 265. It'll fit. The rear is perfect. Yeah. Like I love that. Yeah, you're right. It does kind of look. Looks fine. 
Well, the good news is we have another side of the car, so we can test the 265 on that. No. As you know, my favorite part of a fresh set of teeth, the OG stickers. Blue's great, the red valve cap's gotta go. Yeah. All right, so we got white on this side and then you guys saw the diamond black on the other side. I wanna hear which ones you like better. I honestly can't decide myself personally and inadvertently I want you to like whichever ones I like less because then I get to keep the other ones for my car. Basically, whatever wheels don't go on this car is probably gonna go on my car, so even if you don't get your way, if you don't, you'll still see them on the other. Every $20,000 you spend, sorry, every $5 you spend, <laughs> you enter for a chance to win the Supra $20,000 cash. LZMFG.com, DriftHQ.com, we got everything. Check it out. Latest update, I guess this would be a day after the last one we filmed. What's the status on the... Uh, okay, so right now we have the modification we showed previously removed. And we do have a loom installed in the car. So we found the perfect place for GCU to sit behind the uh, motor for the air, air conditioning. Above the carpet, we put, we snaked the loom uh, on the inside so we can go below uh, the shifter, the original no one. Let me show you. Okay. There is a small rubber grommet installed so the, mm, the wiring doesn't rub on the metal. And on, there's more stuff going on, on the underneath. So this is the wiring that you just snaked in? Yes, this is the wires we uh, installed. So now we are connecting them to the car and making sure that everything is uh, connected perfectly as it should be. Sweet. Right, so what kind of wiring gear are you using? Uh, right now we're using the right hand stuff. Uh, this is a PTFE wires. Uh, very high grade, oil resistant, temperature resistant and uh, right hand gear 25 uh, heat, shrink, heat shrink. So basically you can torch the whole thing, uh, peel the heat shrink off, put a new one and use the wire which is in perfect order. Adam and Bartek got the GCU working to where the car is drivable now. Last night they were ripping it around. I haven't personally driven it yet, but before they get in today, the next step is adding the clutch pedal. So this is actually a 350Z gas pedal and it has a TPS that'll be used as a potentiometer because what I didn't understand, it's not just an on off switch with the clutch pedal and the automatic transmission. The potentiometer actually lets you control the slip of the automatic transmission, which I'm pretty excited about because that's gonna give you a little bit more feedback as a driver and sometimes when we drift, you actually slip the clutch rather than fully disengaging and re-engaging it. Johan's sick today, so uh, LZ Fab. I don't know how to weld, so I went and sourced a piece of rectangle steel because we gotta figure out some way to build this up so when we mount it to the firewall, the pedal can be in the, a good position. But Sean just found something uh, not so great. Wet. <laughs> Carpet is wet. And there might be a bunch of water under it. We think the car might be flooded. Yeah. It, I mean, it's okay because the car works, so like, it's whatever. It doesn't smell like mold either. But there's a lot of, a lot of water in there. Make sure you sniff your fingers after you do that. Adam. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, anyway, the this should hopefully work pretty good. I mean, this is obviously V1. We're going to try to make it way nicer than this, but... John ain't here, and we're gonna get this thing in there so we can be doing some clutch kicks today. You heard? You heard? Your, uh, electrical tape job there. Well, we're gonna actually bolt it. This is just for mock up. No, you just use more tape. V1 is electrical, V2 is gorilla tape. All right, so we got V1 pedal setup done. We were hoping to be able to bolt it to the firewall, but instead of drilling a bunch of holes in it that we knew we would later change, we opted for having Cricket come over from Drift HQ, lay down a couple tacks, and now we've got a pedal. It's a little bit low and it's a little bit far to the left. I think I'd prefer it to be a little bit higher. 
and a little bit over here. That way I can put some sort of dead pedal back. But the idea is to get something in the car. That way Adam from HTG can work with the settings and parameters of the ECU. We can test the functionality of it. And down the road, we can really dial in the fitment and maybe even make some sort of solution so that if someone else wanted to do this, there's not really anything custom that needs to be made and it's just kind of plug and play. I've been listening to Adam have fun driving around the compound. And I know it's not exactly as you want it to be yet and it still needs yeah. some more fine tuning. He really doesn't want me to test it because he wants my first impression to be amazing. But I just I just want to get that first feel of the clutch pedal because I could hear it from outside. I hear you going rrr, rrr. Yeah. It sounds like it's working. Yeah, it is working, but not as good as possible. So for someone that doesn't understand automatic transmissions like me, are we actually disengaging clutches inside of the transmission? Is it letting the torque converter slip? Like what is the, the clutch pedal uh, actually doing? The clutch pedal is actually disengaging part of the clutches. This 8 HP is like uh, five clutches total and you engage three for gear. So when you let go of one clutch, you basically have neutral. Sick. Yeah. So that's what we, we are doing now. And, but it's, it, it needs to be a little bit better. What's the longevity if, like, I don't want to say we're essentially neutral dropping the car, but... Um, it really is something like that. But it, but it can take it? Yeah, apparently, yeah. yeah. A lot of people so, do this, like, this isn't just, like, the first thing, just to reiterate. What's different about this is you guys have had made it work on BMWs with the factory ECU yes. and everything. But the Supra and the 8HP and the Supra is a little bit different, so that's why we're just trying to get it perfect. Because this is what everyone else will get is going to be based off of this car. Yes, exactly. I promise I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm not. I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm just gonna test the clutch. I just wanna see what it feels like. The, the clutch is too, too, the, the spring is too, too loose. Too loose? Yes. It should be more... More stiff? More stiff, yeah. All right. Much more stiff. Do you got anything that could help make it stiffer? No. <laughs> I make so fun. Okay, so you start the car here. Okay. So everything right now is just running off the stock shifter. Yes. And then Mike can hop in with me and... Can I use yeah. the pedals? Yeah. Cool. It's weird because my brain wants to push the clutch in before I put it in reverse. Oh, I gotta take it out of the park. I'll go easy, I promise. Alright, you ready for our first clutch kick? It feels like a clutch kick. Yeah. Shifting's like it blips and everything. All right, let's initiate a drift with a clutch kick and see what happens. Let me try to turn my traction control off. All right, so we're in second gear. I'm gonna give it a clutch kick entry. It's gonna be so weird. <laughs> Definitely need some dialing in. Yeah, a little bit. But the, the, the concept is there. It feels a bit bizarre. It feels very weird, but like in a cool way. Yeah. I see what you mean by it needs a little bit more more dialing in. Yeah. But still just hearing hearing this car do a clutch kick sounds so weird. Yeah. Do you think today or maybe tomorrow we'll get it to the point where yeah. it'll do the thing? Exactly. Sick. I don't want to break it. I don't. Please don't. I know. <laughs> I really peer pressured in him into letting me drive it just because I want I'm like way too excited about this. But I will let you do your thing. All right, so I got to formally introduce you guys to Bartek. Hi, hello. So hello. you and Adam are both the owners of HTG, correct? That's correct, that's right. And you have joined us for some fun after spending some time with Miami. What were you doing down there? Oh, uh, tuning. We had a DCT S14 project, pretty wild. Well, yeah, I enjoyed the stay, but now I'm here and I enjoy it even more. So uh, in addition to the A90 Supra, Duarte is working on a DCT drift car that you'll see covered on the Drift HQ channel. But from the sounds of it, you guys are getting this thing more and more dialed. I got to wrap up this video today. I know that it's not completely perfect and we got some stuff we're going to work on tonight. Yeah. But uh, can, uh, can you give me the demo? Maybe you could drive, I could drive. Maybe you drive. Sure. Right passenger. We can, we can do it. Sure. Let's do it. So I kind of messed up. I didn't think about the fact that I don't have hubs for this car because it's five by one twelve. If we had access to my dyno, it would make things a lot faster. Tomorrow we will because I ordered some uh, bolt-on adapters. Since that will simplify that, we can throw it on the dyno. But I know the biggest thing that you're spending time on is just trying to get those upshifts and downshifts. Yeah. So it's like 50-50 is like getting the GCU control the trans and the other 50 is like, you know, getting the integration with the chassis. And you know, the trick is that one part influences the other part, so it has to be really dialed in. 
uh, is the first MK5 Supra that we're doing. So the whole chassis integration, you know, takes time. But as soon as we have it done, then it's like easy for the, to replicate. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just like copy and paste if someone else were to want to do yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the thing that I thought was going to take the longest is just making sure that the ECU is happy. Yeah. But it seemed like almost instantly we got that down to where it does the things it needs to do. It doesn't limit power, right? Yeah, but it's, it's actually a little tricky because it does some things, but it does not do all of the things that we need. So to have it running perfectly, we still need to have like all of those flags, all of those, you know, messages going on that will in perfectly. It's not there yet, uh, it just needs some more time. Uh, so hopefully today we'll have it finished tonight. Uh, probably some polishes tomorrow and then should be good to rip. All right, let's let's uh, let's get the demo. What okay. do we got? So it's really far from what it's going to be, but we've got the torque management working on some of the gears. I mean, it's still a little too violent, so we're going to dial it in. But you can feel it's actually taking the torque out uh, on the upshifts. On the downshift is doing the blips, so yeah, that's exactly what we want. And there are still, you know, more refinement that needs to happen to have it not like overcut or over blip. Uh, yeah, then have the ECU happy with you know all of the tractive torque values and stuff and stuff. But yeah, anyways, it works. So as soon as we have this done, we'll be ready to you know do some clutch kicks and stuff. Uh, also, transmission affects how the engine delivers the torque. So right now it's a little too violent will calm me down to be a little more predictable on the drive. But yeah, it drives, so that's a big success. I mean, we knew it will be hard, and it is hard, so exactly as expected. But yeah, that's why we're here, too, to make it happen. Now, one other thing that uh, we're working on figuring out, the differential in this is actually controlled with CAN messaging, and that's what tells it to lock up. I assume that's like under power it locks up? Yeah, uh, so it needs to have the sets of messages from various systems, including the trans control. So I guess without some of the messages, it won't like fully lock up. Uh, but yeah, we'll find those messages, messages as well. Uh, right now we're running open diff, unfortunately. So yeah. There's another solution that we can do that's identical to what Jordan does on the F80 that Duarte has and Taylor has. And Jordan basically mods the motor thing on the side of the diff and it makes it permanently act like a welded. I have Jordan doing that for me as a backup, but if we can control the diff with CAN messaging and have it drive more like a stock car, I feel like that would be a much more uh, appeasing option for someone that wants to have a suitable street car and drift car. Yeah, we'll deliver two options, so just pick whatever's best for you and that's it. Cool. I'm really excited. This is uh, definitely a different experience for me learning these new cars and a lot of the quirks that goes on with them. Super thankful to both Adam and Bartek for spending so much time out here getting it dialed in. And I do have exciting news that in addition to the developments with the automatic transmission, in the next video we have some very huge advancements when it comes to the angle kit setup. So you guys will see us, I don't want to say make history because it's not like this is some huge thing, but for me it's pretty exciting being on the front end of developing a very weird and maybe unconventional drift car. Better physics. Yeah, this is intense. I'm, I don't enjoy this actually. You can do this, I think. You think? Yeah. I don't think. The fingernails aren't what they used to be. You need to drink more milk. Yeah. Colette's got me like California bull. What's up? <laughs>